supersonic airplane right now, those are fighter jets, right? F-18s, F-35s. They'll make a sonic boom that'll be very startling. For 50 years, there's been a ban of no commercial supersonic flight over land. We're trying to change that speed limit into a sound limit. To make the business case to get us across the country twice as fast so everybody can see grandma. The X-59 is NASA's implementation of all the sonic boom research that we've been doing so that we could fly supersonically, but make a very, very quiet sonic boom on the ground. And we will, in the future, apply these technologies to commercial airplanes through our industry partners. You've all heard of sonic boom. You may not know it was a sonic boom, because thunder is a sonic boom. Where if you have an airplane, it's a boom boom, a no shock and a tail shock. So Mach 1 is the speed of sound at varying altitudes. So we will be flying about 40% faster than the speed of sound, which is Mach 1.4. It's about 925 miles per hour. You're actually traveling faster than the sound you generate yourself. A Boeing 737 flying across the country, and they will get from New York to Los Angeles in about five and a half hours. If you were to travel at Mach 1.4, you can make that flight in about three and a half hours. So normally the inlet for the engines are under the aircraft. Because the engine is above the wing, the shock waves only go up from the engine, not down. The sound we'll make on the ground is more of a thump than hopefully blend into everyday life. So for X-59, the design is to try to make it so that there are no abrupt changes in shape. And so if you look at this long nose, which takes up over a third of the airplane, there's a very gradual increase in size so that you can weaken those shock waves and therefore lessen the sonic boom. If you look at this airplane, you'll notice that there is no forward windscreen. So I can't see out the front of the airplane. There's actually a camera on the top of the airplane and then on the bottom of the airplane is another camera system that'll drop out. But the idea is that's stitched together and put on a screen in front of me. Future commercial supersonic aircraft, we like to say would have the DNA of X-59, but it won't look exactly like this. Chuck Yeager took the X-1 faster than the speed of sound and we've had X-planes ever since. This is X-59. They are purpose-built, you know, for essentially experimentation to prove new concepts. We like to joke that the X-1 broke the sound barrier and this airplane is trying to fix it. So when you go supersonic, usually you don't even know it. Sometimes the altimeter will swing around a little bit. The biggest thing is you have to think ahead of the airplane, just like if you drive in the car, or so where's my turn gonna be? Oh, that was it. You know, same thing when you're in an airplane as you go faster and faster and faster. You just have to think farther ahead of the airplane. She looks like a fighter airplane, like she would do some, pull some Gs and stuff like that. She flies like the commercial aircraft, straight and level. And normally you won't really feel much G force turning when you suddenly go subsonic. It makes the airplane want to pitch up a little bit. If he pulls too many Gs, he's going to get in a lot of trouble. Yeah, she's going to, yeah. The first phase is to test the aircraft, confirm the sound on the ground, and then we'll take it into communities. That's the most important part, is we're going to fly this aircraft to gather their response to the sound. So we'll look at four different climate zones. We're going to need the citizen scientists to kind of help us out and answer, you know, the survey and tell us, you know, I didn't even hear it. Or yeah, I heard it, but it wasn't too bad. Or now that woke the baby, so that's a little bit too much. I've heard sonic booms from F-18s, F-15s, T-38s, and all of that research, all of that technology gets me very, very excited. There are times like when we turned on the engine, full max afterburn, it just, it's the highlight of your career. First flight will be the highlight of my career. As a test pilot, it's always been great, you know, working at NASA with all the different projects that I've got to play with. Only a few more months, hopefully, we're going to take this thing airborne. It's starting to feel real. Follow us at www.nasa.gov quest with two S's for supersonic.